Back to Kings Meadow for the second half of Chelsea versus Leicester. 4 0 at the break, thanks to two goals from Panilla Harder after strikes from Gura Ratin and Aaron Cuthbert already had the Blues 2 0 up. Leicester City at the very least hunting a better performance in the second half to try and stop the runaway train that Chelsea were in the first. Chelsea, of course, now kicking from right to left. And the all blue with the white socks. Leicester City in their changed gold and white kit with the black numbers. Attacking from left to right as we look at things. Brighton, but ran kindly for Bot. Another challenge in there, but Leicester City get the throw. With Perise with the foot in. Worth saying that even if they do lose tonight, they'll still be in a favourable position to complete the great escape, Leicester City. There would be two points above Reading with two games left. Worth saying that this does have a real factor for them too in terms of goal difference. I mentioned it before that Chelsea are now two goals as things stand behind Manchester United on that metric, albeit if Chelsea win all their games, they take the title. Chelsea started, Leicester I should say, started tonight on minus 27 and Reading were on minus 28. So Leicester have already fallen behind Reading on that and who knows how crucial that could prove in the final standings of things. Reading of course faced Chelsea on the final day after playing Spurs at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on Saturday the 20th. platform for Chelsea from the free kick. Cuthbert over it and keen to get on with it. Emma Hayes will want no drop in tempo or performance from Chelsea in this second half. will be buying another hat full of goals to go with the seven they got against Everton but that's given away by James. And Simpson was just trying to link the play on, couldn't quite do so. Harder dropping deep as she likes to do. Brighton. Now Cuthbert driving on with real purpose. She's trying to set it wide and then goes flying in to win it back. Classic Cuthbert. Then sets it wide, gets fouled. We're playing advantage. It's James. Still James. Oh, lovely feed. And not quite the finish to match from Lauren James. Tic tac after tic tac, leaving Leicester City for dead. Just couldn't quite wrap her left foot around it, Lauren James. It's not entirely dissimilar in the way and the shapes in which she moved there to that goal that she scored against Spurs at Brisbane Road earlier this season. James with seven across the campaign in all competitions. Well, up here in the press box, we were doing a bit of bean counting at half time and worked out that take the last three results between these two before tonight 7-0 9-0 and 8-0 wins for Chelsea we'll come back to that because they might be about to add yet another goal to the tally here's harder little reverse ball 
nice to concede the throw in. If you take those three hammerings and then the 4 0 at half time here, I make it Chelsea have scored 28 goals without conceding one in three and a half games against Leicester City. One of those in the FA Cup quarter final, three or two and a half in the WSL. As he goes harder, it works out as a goal every 12 minutes or so. An utterly remarkable amount of dominance. Chelsea will look to continue in this second half. It's fair to say that the weather has turned though. We've got glorious sunshine for parts of the first half and now we've gone back to the sozzling rain that has been quite prominent in London in recent times. First corner of the second half to Chelsea. What can they make of it? And swing it towards that far post. May yet run for Cuthbert. Cuthbert, he does well to keep it in. Aaron Cuthbert, who said in the build-up to this one, everyone's against us. It's added fuel to our fire. And it's fair to say that the Chelsea machine looks very well old right now. Series of comings together. Eventually, the referee's whistle goes. A head injury from the first collision. And Cuthbert and Perfield came together afterwards. Aaron Cuthbert, who's been such a huge player for Chelsea this season, won more tackles, interceptions and duels than anyone on the pitch for either side in the semi-final Champions League second leg at the Camp Nou. It's led to Chelsea fans very much being eager to get a contract sorted out. Contested drop balls, of course, a thing of the past. That law changed a little while ago. So it will be Chelsea to get it back when we restart. Played on to James. James driving on. Lauren James likes he got a big hand to it and needed to. Now suddenly the rain is turning into thunderous rain here. You can hear it smashing down on the corrugated roofs of the stands and it comes ball into the box dealt with initially Chelsea will chase for more and certainly you're in the mood for more do you hope wherever you are you're experiencing slightly better weather conditions than what we're dealing with now I know plenty of you got in touch at half time listeners in Canada the USA Australia South Africa and Spain amongst others. Pleasure to have you with us, whether you're in warmer climes or chillier ones. Weather not showing any real hint that summer's round the corner here in the UK. Ericsson. Harder. Green on. Good physicality from Cuthbert to win it in there off Tierney, now James. Brighton. Ericsson. Progressing the ball forward, James. Effortless. She makes it look that way, Lauren James. James once more. Still James. Couldn't quite get the one-two. Rare chance for Leicester to break forward, but it doesn't last long. Cuthbert's there to close up the space. One Chelsea fan on Twitter even wrote a tongue-in-cheek letter to Chelsea owner Todd Bowley asking him why he hasn't offered Aaron Cuthbert a lifetime contract yet has without any reasonable doubt had her best season in Chelsea colours this time around Abdullah Abdullah is singing her praises saying the amount of tactical evolution we've seen from her from the ages of 21 to 24 is unbelievable seven year deal let's go saying that on the London is blue podcast blue royalty I'm no doubt be very happy with what they've seen so far very tough night for Leicester by Leipzig towards Tierney. 
Wrighton. Charles. Charles just hooks one, but couldn't quite wrap a foot round it. Too close to Leipzig. He was eager to send it long, but Charles is in there to intercept. And then shimmies away from Kane. Ball down the line for James. Options in the box. Might just go to self here. It's still James. It's Lauren James! Oh! Magnificent! Superb! Brilliant! Any word you want. It's Lauren James' supremacy once again at Kings Meadow. What a season she's having. Shimmy's inside, takes her time, and then bang, picks out the top corner. Her eighth of the campaign across all competitions. Her fifth in the WSL. It was already her best ever scoring season. It is yet another to the growing tally. Won't be many changes at the upcoming Women's World Cup from the Lionesses squad that won the Euros last summer, you'd imagine. But Lauren James being in that squad, having of course not been part of it last summer, would be one certainty. Assuming fitness, of course. Down the line from Charles. Intercepted by CJ Bott. Lauren, Lauren James was described by Emma Hayes as different to any other player I've ever worked with. And this is someone who you'd imagine is going to be a star right at the top of this sport for a very long time. Still only 21, that's a scary thought. As Harder was trying to slip it through for Lloyd Pulse. to just try and get a foothold seems to it's worth saying it would be very foolish to think that with the score at 5 nil, this last half an hour and a bit plus stoppages is unimportant all but both in terms of momentum and confidence but also the pragmatic situation of goal difference on the table for both of these teams it's a big difference between 5 nil, or Leicester City can get a consolation or two back and then if Chelsea can Keep going with more goals. The rain has mercifully stopped somewhat after that heavy thunderstorm. Carter. Ericsson. First and only Swede to captain in a Champions League final. Now Carter driving on, given the space to go on. Trying to slide it in behind. There was Courtney Nevin. Nevin, one of the January reinforcements, signed from Hammerby in Sweden. Smashed away by Leipzig. He didn't really have a lot of options in truth. Charles. Beaten there. And then eventually Hannah Kane fouled by Cuthbert. That was the only way they were going to stop her on that run. Ruby May 
space over it. Mesa, I know speaking to German Tamura, who worked with her at Arsenal, described her as a top, uh, top young defender who has all the technical, tactical and mental qualities to go on and become a world-class defender right at the very top of the game. Well, gained a lot from this loan spell and is still only a teenager. On loan from Manchester City, of course. Headed by Charles, picked up by Cuthbert. Lots of time for Ericsson. No changes yet for either side. I imagine they won't be too far away. Five substitutes up both coaches' sleeves. Chelsea might see this as a good chance to rotate somewhat. With the scoreline so comfortable, of course. Intercepted by Lloyd Poles. Great anticipation. Advantage from that collision. Now, Wrighton has lots of options. One of them's James. Still Lauren James. And dragged wide. Not quite this time for Lauren James. Leicester have got their first change ready. Looks to me like Monique Robinson just in front of us might be ready to come on. Chelsea with the corner, wanting number six. Chelsea have got a change ready too, it looks like as well. Corner goes short. James. Cross deflected. And another corner. Looks to me like Joanna Ritzenkanrid is coming on in not too long. whipped in, headed up by Mace, and out for yet another corner. Great to see the rainbow Chelsea logo flying behind the goal. Worth mentioning that Chelsea Pride have been nominated for the Community Organisations Award at the 2023 National Diversity Awards. Chelsea Pride Chair Tracy Brown also nominated for the Positive LGBT Role Model Award. Corner taken short. Now James to put one in, and nodded wide by Harder. Change coming for Leicester. Monique Robinson is coming on in place of Josie Green. Green who was caught in possession for the second goal. The former Spurs captain once upon a time, of course. Robinson scored a big goal for Leicester against Brighton in January as part of their great escape. That led to their first win of the season. Change for Chelsea. Sophie Ingle coming on for Aaron Cuthbert, who has been typically industrious and impressive and skillful in that central midfield region. Here comes the Welsh international Ingle. It's by no means the last change. Penilla Harder takes her leave. Will not get her first WSL hat trick. That will have to wait for another day. Jesse Fleming comes on. And Joanna Vitinkanri comes on as well. Replacing Lauren James. And it is a quadruple change. It is Alsu Abdulina will come on as well. Somewhat lesser spotted at times during her stint at Chelsea. And it gets her opportunity to impress here down that left flank. So not something until a few years ago, of course, that would have been possible. Five subs only coming in in the COVID times. And it's 
sticking around in the rules since. And that going up from the three that was previously possible means that coaches can do exactly what Emma Hayes has done, which is make a quadruple change. Interesting to see exactly how Chelsea tactically reorganised from that. I'd expect that Imgo will be a straight swap for Cuthbert in central midfield. Abdulina for right and down the left. Cross whipped in, taken down nicely. And Ericsson is in the right place at the right time to deny Missy Goodwin the chance to finish. Cross, headed only half away, nice touch from Perfield. And then Seamson back for Perfield, deflected, bit of a scramble in there, and Lopez just puts boot to ball. decided that the ball had gone out. Chance for Chelsea to pile some more goals on. Chasing a League and Cup double, of course, after losing 3-1 in the Conti Cup final against Arsenal. Eric Song pops it on for Abdulina. Fleming dropping deep. Jesse Fleming, who talked to the Bear Pitch podcast all about life growing up and also life at Chelsea. Amongst other things, talked about the influence of Magdalena Eriksson in terms of analysis and even two to three minutes after a game already taking apart and picking apart what happened. Fleming described by Janine Becky as the smartest, most tactically sound player I've ever played with, the centre of creativity in any team she plays in. One of the kindest souls I've ever known, an unmatched teammate. And Fleming has helped Chelsea progress it forward here. Beautifully constructed move. Little ball inside. Didn't quite find the intended target of Neve Charles. He's got a little ball, a bit more attacking freedom since this reshovel after the four changes. Still have one substitution up their sleeve, of course, Chelsea. Now they come Leicester through Kane. Kane slow cross and just wide. As good a sight of goal as Leicester City have had all game. Not quite able to convert. Leicester City who improved so much under Willie Cook. 13 points on their last 10 games. It's pulled them right out of trouble. And you compare that to their rivals, Brighton taking nine from their last ten. Spurs and West Ham managing only five. Reading picking up just four points. They have struggled in London. They've lost every single away day. All seven before tonight against London-based clubs without ever scoring a goal. And that streak, that unwanted streak, does look set to continue. Ritten Connery. Cleverly left alone by Ingle. Eriksson with the chance to progress upfield. Leicester was standing off. Just too much on the pass for Abdulina though. City finishing their season off after this with West Ham United at home on Sunday the 21st and then six days later away at Brighton. They'll fancy their chances against West Ham. They've been in really poor form right across the second half of the campaign. It's only really their form earlier on in the season that has kept them from falling into the relegation battle. Here's CJ Bott. 
It's a fortuitous reflection back off Lloyd Poles and then clips it in. And then Katchenberger is there. And Katchenberger is something of a giant at Chelsea, quite literally, both in terms of the stature and impressive performances over the years since signing from Birmingham City back in January 2019, but part of a crowded goalkeeping department at Chelsea. So Chira Musevic and then also Nicky Everard, who is signing this summer from OH Leuven. Will be three top quality goalkeepers at Chelsea and no shortage of competition for places next season. Everard winning Belgium's Footballer of the Year, the Golden Shoe for 2022. Both Musevic and Berger have signed long-term contracts in recent times. Yellow card, first of the game for Chelsea. Jesse Fleming goes in the book. Home fans, unsurprisingly, not happy. City looking for one back. Just a little confidence booster, something to take away. In towards that far post. It's flicked away by Ingle. Now Robinson, he'd just come on. Instead, inadvertently helps Chelsea launch a counter attack. Charles flying forward. And that will definitely be a yellow, no doubt, for Hannah Kane. Fleming flying away. And the only way Leicester could stop her was to foul her. Plenty over the free kick for Chelsea. A long way out, probably more likely to put a cross in than have a go from so far away. Lina up the line. Now CJ Bott. Jankovic. Lipols. Abdulina. Ingle. from Leicester City. Of course, came up last season and only just survived last time around. Two wins against Birmingham City, both home and away. Key in making sure that it was they who stayed up and Birmingham City who went down. Chelsea are to make change here. Shannon O'Brien to come on first. Leicester are making their sub first. O'Brien, who's just come back from a knot, wasn't quite ready in time to start tonight. And also Molly Pike has come on in midfield for Leicester City. And for Chelsea, it will be Welcome return to action for Kadisha Buchanan. Kadisha Buchanan coming on for Magdalena Eriksson. As you can hear, we get a very warm ovation. 
Sophie Ingle taking the armband for Chelsea with Ericsson going off. So that is all five of Chelsea's changes made. Leicester City have made three and still have a couple in their back pocket if they so wish to use them. All across, Buchanan making a near instant impact. Nish Buchanan, a Canadian international, of course, will be alongside her Chelsea teammate, Jesse Fleming, you'd imagine, at the Women's World Cup this summer in Group B. One of the more open looking groups from the draw, and there with the newcomers, the Republic of Ireland. Nigeria and the co-host Australia. Buchanan back out on the pitch. This is the first appearance in six. Has missed the last five with an ankle problem since playing the full 90 minutes in a 3-0 win at Aston Villa just over a month ago in the early April. Set back by Perese for Carter. Abdulina, a slightly heavy touch that had Pike interested for a second. Buchanan once more. Chelsea in cruise control. We'll be eyeing yet more goals as well. They've closed the gap to being just one behind Manchester United on that metric as things stand. Leicester pushing for one of their own though. CJ Bott to take the throw. said in the build-up to this one that her side are in a good rhythm and like this run of games it's tiring in one element because it's a quick turnaround but if you ask the dressing room what they prefer it's back-to-back -back games or lots of training the players will always choose the first of those two options it certainly does seem like Chelsea are coming into form at the right time five goals from five shots on target in that first half against Everton they fell just short of five but they'd have been pretty delighted with the four first half goals here tonight. And then they've added one more through Lauren James after the break. I know that on the Blue Royalty podcast, they do three word match reviews. Welcome back, Panilla and Ice Cold Panilla. Two of those in you know, to uh, Star Dane, who scored with her first touch on Sunday, got two goals and an assist. And would imagine there'll be plenty more reflections on her excellence tonight and role in that first half performance that blew Leicester away and all but effectively ended the game It's a contest in terms of who will take the points. Abdulina fouled by Pike. Referee tried to play advantage. Molly Pike, who was a youth player at Chelsea once upon a time, scored 14 goals in 17 games as Chelsea finished second in the 2018-2019 WSL Academy League. Former England under-19 captain, then had spells at Everton and Bristol City. Working with Willie Kirk at Everton before, of course, doing the same here at Leicester. Carter nearly playing away into a little bit of trouble there. Now Buchanan. Little foul in there from Chankovic. Chelsea 
chance for Leicester to put the ball in the box if they wish to. A little flick on, and then turned away by Ingle. Good feet in there from Chankovic. Chankovic, who is the cousin of Jovana Damjanovic of Bayern Munich. Jankovic, who spent three years at Rosengård, had a little loan spell at Barcelona just under a decade ago as well. He's quickly becoming a really key player for Chelsea, and at 27 is probably approaching her peak. Here goes Bot, slides it through, Pike trying to get there. Berger can gather easily enough. Back to Berger. Leicester City just happy to try and limit the damage. Around the outside goes Bot. Just couldn't quite get a foot around it. Good persevering run though from CJ Bot. Experienced defender who does have the ability to bring the ball out from the back well. Signed from Valera in Norway and has steadily become an important part of this Leicester City backline in the revival story. Said that she loves being an underdog team and rising up from a difficult situation. They've certainly done that this season. Don't forget they did the same last season. Didn't have any points from their first nine games last time around. Jonathan Morgan departed, Lydia Bedford came in, helped lift them to survival. And then this season had no points from nine games. Willie Kirk going from director of football to being in charge in the dugout. Abdulina. Cut out by Bot. Pike. Pike's cross. A little header on. Perfield fighting for it but losing the battle. Ingle. Chelsea just now. Rubber stamping a 14th straight home win in the WSL since a 0-0 draw here against Arsenal back in mid-February of last year. And it will be 24 wins and one draw since they last lost at home in the WSL. A 2-1 surprise defeat against Brighton way back in February of 2021. They might be about to add another goal, not quite. Unconvincing defending though, still here for Chelsea. And worked in behind, brilliant save by Leipzig. But saves like that, that are why she's made such an impact since joining Leicester City mid-season. Now here come the Foxes. Good aggressive challenges on Shannon O'Brien. O'Brien one of the very best young players coming through in the division. This was the chance up the other end. Jankovic setting it on a plate for the strike. Leipzig was alert in there to keep it, for now at least, at five.
to Lena Rofer. Pull forward as we've got another heavy thundery shower. This truly is a little bit of the English weather for you tonight, folks. Four seasons in a couple of hours or so here at Kings Meadow. The second big thundery shower that we've had. Thankfully, pretty much everyone is under a roof. No totally uncovered stands here as do have occasionally at some grounds. We had a bit of glorious sunshine in the first half and we've had a little bit of in-between during this game at points too. Ingle. Well, Jessie Parker Humphreys on her flying geese, Substack said this was Chelsea at their free flowing best, a sight that's been rarely seen this season. The return of Penilla Harder looked particularly inspirational. And we're certainly seeing more of Chelsea at their free flowing best tonight. Parker Humphreys adding in relation to the reports appearing to confirm the departure of Harder and Chelsea captain Magdalena Eriksson. But there's a sense that both players want to finish their time at Chelsea on a high. There's still plenty of chapters to be written in this season. Which could yet end up in a League and Cup double for them. So they look to make it four straight WSL crowns. First won it in 2015. And they've been pretty dominant in English football for a lot of the time since. Here come Leicester though. Perfield has the chance to hit one. Drifts wide. Chankovic caught in possession. Good pressing, pressing in there by Shannon O'Brien. Drifting towards stoppage time at the end of this one. Pike on the press. Only scored one in the second half, Chelsea. And only, I say only one because, of course, they got four in the first half. Still have time to add to that tally, of course. Good pressing again in there. As the rain pours down, played round the corner from Fleming after good stuff from Chankovic earlier on in the move. Fleming once more. Chankovic. Fleming just ticks things on. Back for Ingle. Important interception in there. Then given straight back to Chelsea in the form of Buchanan. Well, it's not quite the 9 0 that they managed last season in March of last year, which was a WSL record defeat. It is another comprehensive win for Chelsea. Leicester trying to have some say on the contest later on. Hurriedly cleared by Carter, under pressure. And apologies for the background noise. I don't think you need me to tell you what it is. The rain really is thundering down here right now as we enter the last minute of stoppage time. Leicester boss Willie Kirk is going to have a bit of a job to pick his players up from this. Kirk, of course, highly experienced boss from his time at Bristol Academy and then at Manchester United. He was in charge at Bristol Academy. At Manchester United, he was assistant to Casey Stoney. He admitted eventually that ultimately he wanted to be back as a head coach. Then did some time as director of football at, Chel at Leicester, I should say, before taking over from Lydia Bedford. Here's Ingle. What a ball that is in behind. Could lead to the sixth. Leipzig comes out just in time. Great vision from Neve Charles. You could see exactly what she was trying to do. Almost waited perfectly. Three minutes added on as a minimum at the back end of this one. And given, given quite how thunderously wet it is, 
was not literally funded. It's really important to clarify that. For player welfare, if that was any kind of a threat, we would not be out there. But thundery showers in terms of the heaviness of the rain. Leicester City almost caught out there. Bot retreating. That's Fleming pressing her. Carter is covering. And Carter, probably influenced as well by the conditions, decides to go safety first. Well, Willie Kirk said he felt like his Leicester City side might have nicked a point on a different night against Arsenal. It's been a very different story tonight here. Just to give you a quick score update from elsewhere, Arsenal are in cruise control at Brighton, 4-0 up. Stina Blackstenius with two, Frida Leonard to Mornham and Victoria Pelover on target, but that won't overly concern Chelsea in truth. It's really Manchester United they're in the title fight with. As Carter looks to see that out for a goal kick and does. Chelsea, of course, have their very own Adele in the team with Aaron Cuthbert. Highlighted by her teammates in their words. She thinks she's Adele and won't be told otherwise when she sings the script's Man Who Can't Be Moved. And right now, it's Chelsea who are singing their way to the top of the table. Cuthbert, of course, industrious and impressive as always in midfield tonight. And quite the character off it as well. Here's Abdulina. Crossfield by Charles, great vision once more from her. Lovely feed, oh, and the finish to match. The icing put on the Chelsea cake, so beautifully. Jelena Czankovic, with a goal as beautiful as the weather is ugly. Leicester City stood off and paid the ultimate price. Leipzig did really well to get even a little bit of a hand on it. That was an absolute rocket. Elena Czankovic's fourth WSL goal this season. Wraps up, up, up a magnificent night for Chelsea. It is the cricket season just about here in England. And Chelsea have hit Leicester City for six. Far too good for the Foxes. They go one point behind Manchester United with a game in hand on the Red Devils. So, of course, they'll face in the FA Cup final at a sold-out Wembley at the weekend. For now, though, they've done their job in the league and their WSL destiny as they chase yet another league title. A fourth in a row remains firmly in their own hands. They know that victory in their last three games at West Ham, here against Arsenal and then at Reading We'll see them take the league. As for Leicester City, it is a damaging defeat. It's a hit to the goal difference as well. But they are two points clear with two games left against Reading. And having been so much improved in the second half of the season, will still be very hopeful of securing their survival. But tonight, they were blown away by a Chelsea side who are far too strong and make it 14 straight home wins here in the league. They do love playing at Fortress Kings Meadow. Goals from Gura Wrighton, Erin Cuthbert, and then two from Panilla Harder in the first half in her first start in Chelsea Blue for more than six months. And then in the second half, Lauren James, and then right at the death, Yelena Czankovic. I've been Michael McCann. It's been a great pleasure to have your company wherever you've been across the world. Here at Kings Meadow, it's finished Chelsea 6, Leicester City 0.